month marks 60 years since a Portland family just disappeared. And I know, Jeff, you have been covering this story for a long time. I guess you could say it's almost an obsession with me. The evidence needed to solve this mystery may be rusting on the bottom of the Columbia River. On December 7th, 1958, Ken and Barbara Martin, along with their three daughters, Barbara 14, Virginia 12, and 10-year-old Sue, drove to the gorge to collect Christmas greenery. They were never seen or heard from again. My grandfather was obsessed with this case. Greg Graven grew up surrounded by the Martin case. His grandfather, Walter Graven, was a Multnomah County detective. His family saved his grandfather's case notes, and they clearly show Detective Graven was convinced of one thing. He believes that it was a homicide and that it would be solved when that vehicle is located. The Martins left their home in the family's 1954 Ford station wagon around 1 p.m. When they didn't return, friends called police, but no one agency took charge of the case. After a few days, the Hood River Sheriff claimed the Martins' car must have accidentally plunged into Cascade Locks while backing up in the parking lot. He based his conclusion on some tire tracks and a credit card receipt showing Mr. Martin had purchased gas in town. But Detective Graven kept investigating, and to him, the Martins' trip seemed odd. The time of day when they chose to leave uh, was not a common time. Uh, Kenneth didn't like to drive when it was dark outside. Witnesses reported seeing the Martins eating lunch at a cafe in Hood River. A waitress said the Martins left and headed towards the Dalles. Detective Graven went there. He discovered tire impressions on a bluff leading into the Columbia River. The tread matched the type of tires on the Martins' car. He saw something else on a rock near the edge of the bluff. Paint chips were found that were sent off to the uh, FBI crime lab uh, that were uh, examined and were of the same make, model, and paint uh, scheme of the Martin family vehicle. Then there was the gun found in Cascade Locks near an abandoned stolen car. And then it was completely coated with the dried blood from whatever they uh, had clubbed. They had clubbed something to death, apparently. Bonnie Cox's husband found the bloody gun and turned it over to the Hood River Sheriff, but it was never processed for evidence. Detective Graven connected the gun to the Martin's older son, Donald. He was now in the Navy back east, but a few years earlier, he had been accused of stealing that gun from the Myron Frank department store, where he worked in sporting goods. Walter Graven definitely had considered him, if not a suspect, at least a person of real interest. J.B. Fisher is writing a book about the Martin case. He says Donald Martin had a strained relationship with his family, something Detective Graven was aware of. He was very curious about what Donald Martin's role might be. Donald didn't come back to Oregon during the search for his family. Detective Graven interviewed him by phone. In his notes, Graven wrote, it had to be planned out by, then a name is scratched out. His note continues to read, no one else with a motive. Using computer photo enhancement, J.B. Fisher determined the name scratched out is Donald. We don't know why or who blacked the name out. We do know Detective Graven's bosses told him, leave the case alone. Frustrated, Graven wrote in his notebook, even though I can get no cooperation from anyone, there is no murder that can't be solved. Then, in May 1959, five months after the Martins disappeared, a barge hooked something below the bluff in the Dalles, where Detective Graven had found the tracks and paint chips. Two objects were seen floating up from the water, described as bundles of clothing. A few days later, the bodies of Sue and Virginia Martin were recovered downriver. Although badly decomposed, the autopsy revealed a clue. One of the photographs shows Virginia Martin with hole in head, and that left a lot of question there. It was never clear what caused it. Donald Martin skipped the memorial service for his sisters. He did come back to Portland in June of that year to settle the family estate and meet with Detective Graven, telling him, I know of no one who would murder my folks or no reason for it, but I don't see how it could have been an accident. Detective Graven never was able to solve the Martin case. It haunted him the rest of his life. He indicates in his notebook, will be solved if I live long enough for the car and bodies to be found. Detective Graven died in 1988, but his investigation lives on. So Walter Graven, Jay, 
gave the Dallas Police Department all his notes on the investigation? Yes, probably in the mid 80s sometime. Jay Waterbury and Dan Portwood walk with me along the bluff where Detective Graven believed the Martin's car went into the river. Jay retired as the Dallas Police Chief. Dan retired as a Dallas Police Detective. I would love to be able to see if we can get the car up and just see what's there, see if there's any evidence there or anything. But as far as being prosecuted, I, I don't know. For Dan Portwood, this is more than an unsolved case. I went to school with the two youngest Martin girls. That was back in the 50s when people didn't just vanish. Can the Martin family mystery be solved 60 years after they disappeared? Detective Walter Graven's words seem to reach from beyond, pushing for an answer. Grandpa is the last voice for the Martin family, and he wants to be that last voice even still. As soon as we find that vehicle, we will find the Martin family. Donald Martin went on to live in Hawaii, and after his death in 2003, one of his sons agreed to talk with us. I flew to Hawaii to interview him, but he canceled after another family member stepped in and said, don't do it. Don Martin's daughter later told us, it's a chapter in our lives, better left closed. You'll find much more about the Martin family mystery on coin.com, including my mini documentary from the 50th anniversary with much more details about this case. There's something else interesting too. So Greg, who we heard from in there, is the grandson of Walter Graven. He actually followed in his grandfather's footsteps. Greg is the police chief of Yamhill, and Greg's father was also in law enforcement. So the Graven family, law enforcement runs in that family. And something else, uh, J.D. Fisher, the author mm -hmm. we heard from, his book on the Smartin case comes out in August. And once again, um, we are pursuing still to search an organized search of that area in the Columbia River and the Dalles where a lot of folks, including Walter Graven, felt that car is somewhere there. But that could be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Well, it's good some folks are still trying, yeah. pushing for answers. Again, you can see all of Jeff's work on coin.com.